welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be talking about the Good and the Beautiful's handwriting curriculum and how it is working out for us, how we are using it. This is the second, this is the second video in my Good and the Beautiful series. The first one being a quick Q&A or a not so quick Q&A. Um, and if you missed that video, I will link it above in the description box below so that you can check that out and see some of the most frequently asked questions that I get about how we are using the Good and the Beautiful. Um, today I am just going to talk a bit about how handwriting, their handwriting curriculum has been working out for us. Okay, so the handwriting levels that I received were, and they, <laughs> they're, all, they're all nice and well loved. So I have handwriting level one. This is for my Savannah. She is four years old, um, pre-K slash kinder. I got level one for her. And then I have level three. Wait, do I have them out of order? No, I don't. <laughs> I got level three for my younger son, Kendall, who is now seven years old. And he is getting ready to technically enter, I guess, the second grade. Um, and then I got level four. So this is for my oldest. And what is nice is when you are on the website it will lay out each level and what is the general overview of what is inside what they will be practicing for handwriting um, for instance it says level one children just starting to write their letters usually pre-k to kindergarten uh, level two they're still learning correct letter formation usually grades k through one Level three for children cementing correct letter formation, usually grades one through two. And then they'll tell you if they're introducing some cursive. Um, level five is about 85% cursive. And then level six is about 95% cursive. So all of that information is on their website for you to see along with the sample pages for you to download to just get a brief overview of what the pages are like. This is probably the part of the curriculum that I probably would not have chosen um, myself. Like I said, I did reach out to The Good and the Beautiful when I first started to look into their history program and they so kindly sent me a few other things to just kind of take a look at and give my thoughts on. So I'm super grateful for that and I'm really glad that um, I'm really glad uh, that they were so generous because it turns out that I really do enjoy the handwriting program. The reason why I wouldn't pick handwriting is because I have really great handwriting and so does my husband and the thing that we had in common was that our parents made us write. <laughs> they made us write, you know, they made us write until things looked right and were well and I just, I just feel like as far as handwriting is concerned, once you get that letter formation down it's really just a matter of writing so writing sentences writing words um, writing in your journal um, just writing so it's just not something that was really on my radar but I do understand why um, there are specific programs for it or curriculum pieces to use and I'm really glad that we ended up using it the thing that we use it for the most is I, and I hate to say it like this, but busy work. Um, I will tell you this, that whenever I have a moment and I need to gather the kids all together for us to get started with school, um, even if it is after our school time and they're just getting too loud and I just need them to calm down a bit and reel it back in, um, they know to go and grab their handwriting books and then they get started on that. They put on a little bit of classical music or jazz music, some type of instrumental music, and they just get all on the floor or at the table together and they start getting to their writing. So that is how we use it the most. Inside, inside of the front cover of your handwriting book, it will tell you all about it. It'll tell you about the artwork and the images and um, it tells you 
It tells you that the workbook includes 100 sheets. It tells you all the bits and pieces about the workbook right at the beginning where it says about this course. Um, it's about 100 sheets inside of the workbook and they say it'll take about for the normal school year, it'll be about three or four pages a week. Um, it also tells you how the course is organized. Um, it tells you about coloring and drawing, about um, doing it together as a family, which is basically what we do. It also tells you about pencil grip. So let me just <laughs> let me address the pencil grip for a second. Inside of the workbook, it says correct pencil grip is essential. Um, for help with pencil grip, there are several YouTube videos and websites that display correct pencil grip. Make sure to gently and patiently correct the child's incorrect pencil grip when writing or drawing. Okay, um, I agree. I agree with all of that, okay? But I must say, just in case you've noticed and, and you noticed in the future, that I have a very interesting pencil grip. It is not correct. Um, and my oldest son also has a very interesting pencil grip. It is not correct. Um, it is not an issue for us. I have not had any issue whatsoever with the way that I write. I prefer it. I do know how to write the correct way and so does my older son. But we are more comfortable with our crazy little pencil grip and so we are just fine with it. We do understand that it, if it's an issue for others, I know it bothers others, but it is fine with us. We have no problem writing with our little fancy pencil grip and yeah, I'm just going to leave that at that. Um, he did begin to write using the correct form, but it was just not comfortable and I totally understood it because I was the exact same way. And so that's why I did not push it. I do know, I have heard some really interesting stories from other moms who have like desperately reached out, um, being told by professionals that, um, that it was, uh, that it was horrible and it was going to cause so many problems and you know I we just take certain things lightly around here like I said we learned the correct way in the beginning it wasn't comfortable we are much happier writing with our fancy little grip and so we continue to do that my younger son and my daughter have a correct pencil grip and they are comfortable with that and so they do that Okay, <laughs> so that's how we do the whole pencil grip thing. But I would definitely go with the suggestions and they are absolutely correct. The correct pencil formation is really important. But if it just so happens that you have a fancy grip like we do, I wouldn't sweat it. I'm a special person, you know what I mean? <laughs> I like being special. Anyway, now let me just share you. Share um, the things that I really like or maybe don't love about it. Like I said, we do not use it on a daily basis. We use it when it's necessary. If I'm having trouble, you know, bringing them on in so we can get started with our work for the day, this is the first thing we do. I throw on the jazz music, the instrumental music, and they know to grab their handwriting books and bring it to the table or on the floor, wherever they need to be together um, so they can get started with it. And generally they do about two pages or so. And it's a really nice way to just kind of get them going. And I also use it at the end of the day, like I said, if they're just making too much noise and I need to bring it back in so it's been great for that they go through a lot of different types of practice um, whether it be from letters to actual sentences to words to days of the week what I really enjoy about it is the different bits of um, content they have it's not just all letters it's not just all sentences um, they'll throw in the days of the week, which is nice, but then they'll also throw in some poetry and then they'll also throw in some scripture work. So I like that there's a diversity of information there for them to be able to um, copy. I really like that. They also have plenty of sections for drawing, for drawing and coloring. And while I really like it, um, I would not necessarily prefer that. I would prefer for them to actually have more space to practice on 
um, because we are so heavy in our arts in our homeschool and we do so much drawing and so much painting and all of that stuff naturally every single day this is not a necessity for us so I kind of just let them color them whenever they want to during that little um, handwriting time sometimes they choose to color them uh, if you'll notice that my daughter normally colors a little bit more and draws a little bit more while my son's books normally end up a little bit empty um, in the drawing section. So if I was being picky, I would love to have, you know, I would have loved to just have more space for him to just write, for them to just write. Um, but I definitely understand why it's there. I think it's a nice element. I wouldn't change it. But if I had a preference, I would just like to have had more space for them to actually practice their handwriting. I do, however, definitely appreciate how they switch it up a bit. So it's not just, each section is not just about coloring in the picture. Um, they will have sections where they want you to actually copy the picture. Um, they also have sections where you will complete the mirror image or the other side. Let me see if I can find that one. So they'll have you draw the missing part of the picture. They just have different art practices instead of just each one being color the picture. So I really like that. The thing that I love the most about it is that it is also available in PDF form, which is amazing. And why it's amazing is that it helps me address the issue that I had as far as not having quite enough space for them to continue practicing on. But when you purchase the PDF version, you have those pages. So you can print them out and continue to go over them again and again, which is nice, which is so nice because even when they complete this, when they complete the entire course, I can still have um, the set to be able to print out. For instance, for like my second level, my second grader, once he's completed the course, I still have the PDF form that I can go in and print out and bind for my daughter to use once she gets to that grade. Or I can also just simply reprint pages if I want them to continue to practice those pages over and over again. So I really, really love curriculum that has a PDF version. <laughs> I cannot stress it enough. Now we generally don't use um, these pages on our iPads even though we have used it because that is really how we first began to learn letter formation was um, copying them using a stylus on, well not even a stylus, with our finger first and then a stylus on the iPad so you could definitely do the same thing I could complete these pages but for right now we have just been using them in their printed form whether it be in the course book or in a printed page separately if I wanted to them to get some more um, work out of it another thing that I do is I just simply print out my handwriting pages my blank handwriting pages that we use for stories um, and I will copy the sentence whatever sentence or let me see if I can find that page yeah so I will copy the sentence myself on that page if I want to give my oldest in particular a little bit more space to practice because like I said I just feel like there's not quite enough space inside of the course book for them to just continue to practice that flow especially when it comes to the cursive words but it's an easy super easy fix. I'll just print out the handwriting page and just, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, I'll just write it out. I'll just write it out myself. So here I just wrote up here a pronoun is, a pronoun is a word that replaces a noun and then it gives him two extra um, spaces. It gives him two extra spaces to write it out and then I write the cursive words on the left hand side and then this gives him so much space. I like doing this quite a bit. And that is just how we're using the handwriting workbooks, the handwriting curriculum from The Good and the Beautiful. Overall, oh, like I was saying. <laughs> so yeah, I'll also just print out the pages if I want to give them some extra practice after they've finished the book. The only reason I got the actual book this time around, the course book, 
instead of purchasing the PDF is because it was gifted to me from um, the good and the beautiful so I wanted to try it out um, in the actual course book for and then to be able to show as an example of what you would receive if you purchased it but um, I probably would have purchased both the course book for them to use the first go around and the PDF version for me to reprint and then also use when my next child gets to that level. So I really like it. And by having a different level, um, I can also let my younger son who is doing a, a level two try out some level three pages. It's just really nice. It's a nice way to be able to just get the most use out of your resources. I mean, the major pro for me is the fact that I can have it in PDF form and print out more of the pages for more reinforcement and more practice, and I really, really enjoy that. So, we like using it a lot. Would I get it again? Absolutely, especially if I can get it in the PDF form. Definitely a thumbs up in our book. It wasn't one of the things I would have selected in the very beginning, but I'm super glad that I was able to try it. And I would definitely, definitely purchase the PDF versions of the curriculum along with the course book so that you can complete the course book, but then you also have the PDF version to be able to find and reprint pages for some more reinforcement and practice. So I really enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> Please let me know if you have any other questions about it below and we will see you for the next video in the series. So, bye.